There are five very commonly accepted myths in the Brawl Stars community that you do not want to believe. Today we're going to explain why they're not true as well as give you some awesome tips along the way. Hope you enjoy. Hello fellow Brawlers, I'm Kyra Simon, it is time to brawl. Now today we're going to be talking about five myths that are commonly accepted within the Brawl Stars community and I'm actually seeing a lot of like poor advice going around right now all the, to all these new players and I kind of feel like it's my responsibility to like shed a little bit of light on the situation so that you guys can get the best information possible. Definitely make sure you stick around to the very last one because the last one guys it's gonna shock a lot of people. Okay now I think that many veteran players will understand this but many new players will believe the myth that matchmaking is team based. That's a myth. So what I mean is matchmaking is not team based. Now in most games, the matchmaking, how it works out is they take every member on the team, they look at their individual scores, and then they put them out, they average together, and then they try and pair you up against another team that has a similar ELO score. Now, this does get taken into consideration with Brawl Stars somewhat, but what is way more important is the player with the highest trophy brawler on the team. If two people on the team have like 100 trophy brawlers and then the third person on the team has like a 500 trophy brawler, that team is very likely going to face another team with almost all 500 brawlers. This is actually one reason why you do not want to play with players that have higher trophies than you because you will likely get match made against enemy players that have just more skill than you that you just can't quite keep up. This is also why if you have really high trophies you probably shouldn't play with people that have lower trophies. Try to play with players that actually have brawlers at a similar trophy range as you. And as a side tip, other than when you very first start out, total trophies do not matter at all. When you very first start out, Brawl Stars says, okay, this, this is a new player, let's only face them against new players. Players. But after you reach a certain point, what matters is just the Brawler's trophy level. Okay, myth number two, that Brawl Stars is primarily pay to win. Will you progress faster in Brawl Stars if you spend money on the game? Yes, you will. And will you win more matches if your Brawlers are higher levels than your opponents? Probably. But skill is way more important in Brawl Stars, okay? So I just did an interview yesterday with a player named Riffle. She got all her Brawlers up to 500 plus trophies without upgrading a single one of them. Now she has a main account that helped her gain the skill in order for her to do that, but you can see how it is absolutely possible. And on top of that, we got Relly HH who reached number one in trophies last season with 17.7 thousand trophies as a complete free-to-play player. His, his brawlers ranged between level 6 and 7 with the exception of one brawler who was at level 10 and that was Bo. Let's be honest, Bo just needs his star power to work well. <laughs> now in Brawl Stars the difference between every single level is only 5% of the base level. This means that the difference between a level 1 brawler and a max brawler is 40% stat difference in total plus their star power. In a game like Clash Royale, where the difference actually scales with every single level, the difference between level 1 and max level is actually 300% to put things into perspective for you how much less pay to win Brawl Stars is than other Supercell games. Not only is skill more important to when it comes to the outcome of the match, but also Brawl Stars is way more friendly for those light or medium spenders uh, than in in other games. In most mobile games, the cost to max out an account from like immediately is tens of thousands of dollars. And, is, and in Brawl Stars, even if you spend your gems in the least effective way to max out your account as quickly as possible, we're only talking about like a thousand dollars, maybe like twelve or thirteen hundred dollars. The next myth in Brawl Stars is the best way for you to push is for you to get carried. Once again, not true. This is actually really funny to me because I get a lot of people commenting on my YouTube videos where I'm like pushing a brawler or like reaching a new milestone in trophies or something like that and they're always just like, Oh Kairos, you just got carried! Personally, I like to think that they're just jealous of my OP skills. Now I am very lucky as a YouTuber to have plenty of top players that would love to play with me and get their gameplay on a video. But if I am not holding my own, if my skill is not at least equal to my opponents, they will take me out and we will most likely lose. Even if my teammates are incredibly good, you just can't win consistently when you're getting 3v2 like that. It just, it just doesn't work out. Now believe me, it does definitely help to have teammates that you can count on and who you know have an equal or higher skill than the opponents that you're facing. But if one 
one player's skill is not as high as their opponent's skill, four out of five times, you're going to lose. Not only is a team of two at a 33% disadvantage against a team of three, like after one of them gets taken out, but a less skilled player will make some stupid decisions, and they'll also charge up the enemies super more frequently, which makes it really hard for your teammates. Now, I will say that it is absolutely possible to get carried on one or two matches, especially in like duo showdown or uh, brawl ball. Okay, I'm just thinking about this. You, you can get carried in Brawl Ball if you have a Mortis on your team that is like a like a super a godly Mortis. Like, they're super good. You can be carried in Brawl Ball. That's that's one exception here. But they've got to be like top tier Mortis skill level. Like, they, they got to be great. And your other teammate also has to be really fantastic as well. But in the long run, if you do have a skill level below your t opponents, then uh, you should probably either prepare to have some really frustrating matches or like plan on like having a grind session. Like, how can I get better at Brawl Stars? Or you should just work around with the matchmaking to get easier opponents until you're better at the game to the point where you can actually match that level. There is one exception where you can legitimately get carried, like early on in trophies. Um, a highly skilled player can either like unlock a new brawler or they can create a mini account and go and play with you so that they have brawlers that are like at or below your trophy range so that you get like you get paired up against people that just aren't as good as your teammates skill level. You can do it and get carried like that but honestly I think in that point or that situation you're just doing your yourself like uh, you're not doing any favors for yourself because that's just going to lower your level of skill and then you'll get pushed up really really high and then when you don't have teammates to help carry you then you're just gonna get go on a straight losing streak because you can't compete at that level yet the next myth <laughs> and I hear this all the time oh man is that you should not spend any gold in the shop to buy those PowerPoint specials this is so not true. This, especially if you want to speed up your progression. Now let me explain where this myth comes from because this is something that a ton of people suggest. This is typically from players that have been playing for a long time that are at a point where they are, they ha don't have a ton of gold, okay? Because as your brawlers progress, it costs like, like your PowerPoint increases like this much, but like gold increases like that much. And then eventually you'll have all the PowerPoints that you need to max out all of your brawlers and not have anywhere near the amount of gold that you need to max them out. So people sit there and they're like, oh, gold, I need more gold. Gold is the limiting factor in my progression. But guys, for overall progression, it actually does not matter. If you're a frequent viewer on my channel and you already understand this, I really apologize for bringing this up again, but I'm still seeing people suggest this. And so I feel like I have to tell people. I have to let people know what the truth is. So if you already understand, you can skip ahead to number one, but if you don't, please listen here. The reason why you can spend your gold in the shop and it won't actually negatively impact you and can actually help is because once you do have all the PowerPoints on your account to max out your account completely, then the PowerPoint drops that you would normally get in your brawl boxes will get converted behind the scenes. You won't see this happen, but they will get converted into gold. And then you'll just get a box that just gives you all essentially three times the amount of gold that you're used to getting. The conversion right there is for every PowerPoint that you would have normally gotten, it gets converted into two gold, which is the same as it costs to spend gold on PowerPoints. Is that flipped? Like it takes two gold to buy one PowerPoint in the shop. In other words, if you spend your gold on PowerPoints early on, later on in progression, you'll just get to max PowerPoints sooner which means that the boxes that you'll then open will repay your gold back to you. So what does this mean? It means that spending gold on PowerPoints is not a waste in the grand scheme of things, but I would not recommend just buying all the PowerPoint specials in the shop. If you do buy every single one, then you will get to a point where you have plenty of PowerPoints, but no gold to upgrade, upgrade your brawlers. And then you will just kind of like be frozen in time for a little bit, like not able to upgrade your brawlers for a very long time. And you don't want to do that. What you should, you absolutely should do is you should buy the PowerPoints for one to two brawlers, maybe even more if you really like those brawlers, and then ignore all the other PowerPoints for those brawlers that you maybe don't play or that you're not trying to upgrade. Now, there are two reasons why you want to do this. First of all, is it'll help you upgrade those brawlers that you like to play with more frequently, and then you'll be able to like push with them higher, and that's a lot of fun. Though I do recommend actually upgrading most of your brawlers evenly, but the real key factor, the reason why you should spend your gold in the shop is so that you can get one to two brawlers up to level nine as quick as possible like you just you spend all your gold that you possibly can on getting those one two brawlers to level nine so that there is a chance that their star power will drop from a free box which will save you 2,000 gold. That's like two to three weeks worth of free to play progression. No joke. You you want that to happen. Make that a priority. If you have any questions on that make sure you watch my upgrade guide and that'll get you all taken care of. Okay guys we're coming down 
to number one. And I told you, I told you number one is gonna blow some of your guys' minds away. You're gonna be like, what, Kairos? But bear with me when I tell you that the number one myth that you should not believe is that you should not play with randoms. Yo, Kairos, you telling me I should be playing with some randoms? That's right, noob time. There are times when you should play with randoms. Though, you're really bad at the game, so... I hear this piece of advice all the time. People are like, the, like 90% of the time, people are just like, yep, first tip, don't play with randoms. Don't play with randoms. Guys, randoms are not inherently bad. I mean, when I play with randoms, I'm a random. And most people would be lucky to play with me. And also, guys, I pushed almost all of my brawlers up to 400 by only playing with randoms. And today's video, today's video filled with gameplay with randoms. And we're crushing it. I mean... There are plenty of times when I played with a teammate, an organized team, that we just went on a straight up losing streak and things did not go well at all. That being said, when you do play with an organized team, you can actually set up your specific comp, you can build up an, a specific strategy beforehand, and there are a lot of, like, yeah. That's, that's going to be advantageous in most cases, okay? But just because you're playing on a team does not mean that you're going to beat enemy teams that are filled with randoms, okay? I will admit, it is easier and more consistent to organize a team beforehand, especially if you're on that final stretch from 400 to 500 trophies, or even if you want to push beyond that. But let's talk about four situations where it's actually ideal for you to play with randoms. The first situation is when you are new to the game, okay? When you first jump in, you don't have friends, I mean, who are you going to play with? You're going to play with randoms, okay? And this is not only like you're forced to. If I were to start playing Brawl Stars today with a brand new account, never experienced anything today, but having the knowledge that I have under, you know, how to, how to push higher, what I would do is I would play with a ton of randoms, okay? Because my goal is to actually fill my friends list with as many active and skilled players as possible. You can have a maximum of 200 friends, friends on there. So fill it up, guys. Don't be shy. Fill that up, get new players on that friends list so that you can actually have people to actively play with you later on when that is required, okay? 400, mark, 400 trophy mark, that's really when it gets required and it's, it's pretty beneficial at 300 trophies as well. Now, I don't say just add anybody, okay? So here's my recommendation. What I would do is I would play some matches and whenever I like was playing a match and I saw, you know, with randoms, whenever I saw somebody on my team that was like particularly skilled or like made a good play or they were smart or I just kept hitting play again and we just like went on a good win streak, Seriously, some of my biggest win streaks are actually playing with randoms where we just kept on hitting play again. Like, I don't know, the universe aligned and we were just like amazing team comp and everything. It just worked well. And so what you want to do is then whenever you find those skilled players, you go onto the social tab at that menu of Brawl Stars. You go to the friends section and you go under suggested and it will actually have the people that you recently played with right there and you can send them a friend request. And I would send a friend request to everybody that showed somewhat decent skill. Like, they don't have to be super great. They just have to have some decent skill. And then I would would fill out my friends list to 200 players and then as soon as it was full uh, then I would go through and I'd be like okay who has been pushing along with me actively you know who is a similar trophy range as I am who has stopped playing the game who's inactive I kick everybody that has been inactive I'd kick all the people that haven't had you know that haven't pushed as high as I have because that's a sign that they're probably not into the game as much as I am and then I would keep everybody else and then I'd continue doing that same thing I would just keep on playing with randoms and fill my friends list until you know keep on filtering through it and keep on adding new play players and stuff and then eventually you would have a friends list filled with people that are actively playing that are good at the game so that you do not actually have to play with uh, unorganized teams because you do actually, there's a lot of benefit to playing with an organized comp with brawlers that you know are good for the game. Second situation where you want to play with randoms, okay? And that is going to be when your friends and bandmates online have much higher or much lower trophies than you do. In this situation, you'll just play against players that either have a higher skill than you or have a higher skill than your teammates and you'll you're just likely going to go, go on a losing streak and you don't want that. So in that situation, jump into play with randoms because the matchmaking is automatically going to try to find other randoms that have a similar trophy level as you. And if they have a similar trophy level as you, there's a good chance they're gonna be at a similar skill level of you and then your opponents are also going to be of similar skill. And that way it's like an even matchup rather than like a disorganized like matchmaking is all crazy and all over the place because somebody had higher trophies than everybody else on their team. The third situation where you should play with randoms is if there's nobody online in your club or your friends list. Okay? Don't let having nobody online keep you from playing the game. Okay? And we all download a game to have fun. And trophies are cool, but like, let's be honest, 
in real life, they don't mean anything. And they, they, they give you no value at all. And so having fun, that's what gives you value. So, you just, so don't, hold, don't let that hold your back. Just take a brawler you don't mind losing some trophies with and jump into the queue, play with some randoms, and maybe you win some, maybe you lose some. But it really doesn't matter. And even though trophies like don't matter in real life, like even in the game, the trophy, the rewards that you get for pushing high in trophies, they're, 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 they're kind of meaningless. Like, they're really low. Like, it's not a big deal for you to lose trophies. So don't let trophies ruin your fun for the game, guys. The fourth reason why I would recommend playing with randoms is to improve your skill. There are a lot of different things that I have done in Brawl Stars to actually improve my skill to get to the competitive level that I'm at right now. But one of those things was that I took the time to learn how to play with teammates that I could not rely on by playing with randoms. Now, I definitely think there's some benefit to knowing that you can like count on your teammates in a competitive match, but going in and playing with randoms, like you have no idea what their background is. You don't even know what their trophy count is for their brawler when you jump in with them. You only see that afterwards. So you basically just have to say, hey, I don't know how good you are, bro, but I cannot rely on you. So you plan for things. You you plan on them running to the opposite side with all the gems. You plan on them dying at the most critical moment in the game. And so you're always there. You're ready there. You're, you're taking advantage of their lack of skill, and you're making up for it by your preparation. And you don't learn that when you're playing with people that you know are going to have your back. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. It's kind of a different video than I'm used to doing. And uh, sorry about, you know, wearing the hat. It's a bad hair day, <laughs> plus I wanted to show off the swag, you know, Brawl Stars logo and everything. Make sure you subscribe for future Brawl Stars content similar to today's video, and I want to give a huge thank you to my YouTube and Patreon sponsors for helping support the channel in such a big way. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.